Spinal cord injury is a most devastating disease and on top of it, it usually inflicts the younger people. If it happens in the legs, it's called paraplegia and the victims cannot move or rarely can move their legs. If it occurs both in the arms and in the legs, it's called quadriplegia and the victims cannot move their arms nor can they move their legs. This is a terrible situation both for the victims and for their families. On top of it, there is no standard treatment and all patients when they enter the rehab center usually are told don't expect improvement, that's for the rest of your life, you have to handle it. Fortunately, stem cell therapy offers incredible hope for these victims to improve their situation. It does not mean cure, but it improves their situation considerably, especially for those victims that are inflicted in their uh, cervical column in the neck region where uh, all the nerves are very close together and small improvements mean a lot to those who are inflicted with the disease. The treatments based on stem cell surgery are not yet uh, approved by uh, standard medicine they are still considered as experimental, but this treatment has been approved by the highest court in Austria and so we are able to perform it to all those who seek our help. In addition, there are many published papers on the effectiveness of transplantation of hematopoietic stem cells in spinal cord injury, like this one in the World Journal of Transplantation. Well, I'd like to show you a couple of case histories that may show you the effect of this stem cell transplantation. This is a young aspiring gentleman. He took part in the junior championship in weightlifting. And here you see him lifting 120 kilograms, but unfortunately then the weights fell on his back and the effect you see here, the spine is partially disrupted and there is complete sensory motoric paraplegia of the lower extremities. Uh, these pictures show the dislocation of the vertebrae and uh, the uh, results of the surgical clinic. You see the atrophy of the muscles because there are no more nerve conductions going to the legs. This picture is nine months after stem cell surgery and you see this young guy exercising both in the gym and in the swimming pool. He can move quite a bit and improves and maybe go in himself soon. This young lady had terrible accident with a car hitting her back when she went home from school and she could not move her legs, she even could not sit. Uh, you see the MRI of her spine with big lesions uh, in the lower thoracic column. Here she attended my office in a wheelchair and not able to walk or even stand. This is the result of the surgical clinic. And this now is nine months later uh, in her uh, gym. She starts to walk by herself. She's also a very talented painter, painting my picture here. This picture shows her that she starts to walk with the help of a rollator. Stem cell therapy can have a variety of effects. These effects can be based on the cells that we are apply. There is the hope that the cells that we inject, the stem cells, they eventually become nerve cells and take over the action of those cells that have been killed during the process of spinal cord injury. But we don't only inject cells, we also inject 
bone marrow plasma, which is also rich in hormones that help re-establish some of the function of the spinal cord by hormonal action. These hormones improve the perfusion and that is due mainly to the vascular endothelial growth factor that improves the circulation. In spinal cord injury, there is two steps of injury. The first step is the actual trauma, which may be combined with trauma to the vertebrae, which impinge the spinal cord, and that has to be repaired surgery. This, however, does not repair the spinal cord. The second trauma happens days and weeks later, and it's caused by the malperfusion because vessels that supply the spinal cord are torn and no more function. So there is a secondary ischemia, lack of perfusion. And this lack of perfusion usually augments, makes bigger the injury caused by the actual trauma. So re-establishment of the perfusion or improvement of the perfusion of the spinal cord helps re-establish some of its functions. This is the story of a 29 years old man who had complete spinal cord injury after a car accident. We performed a point of care stem cell therapy and before therapy he could not bend his hands upwards, which means he cannot lift a glass or anything from the table. After surgery now he can lift his hands and this enables him to lift subjects from a table, to eat by himself, to move the wheelchair better and uh, have more flexibility in his hand. Uh, this is a sample of a 27 years old man who fell from an apple tree and uh, he also received stem cell treatment. Uh, the nine month follow up shows that he can walk pretty well with a walker, with a rollator, and that enables him to walk in his own apartment. This is the story of a 43 years old woman with complete spinal cord injury and she also had bone marrow derived stem cell concentrate injection. What we found is that apart from stem cell surgery, it is of paramount importance to do a lot of exercise. Every year an incredible 250,000 to 500,000 people are afflicted with spinal cord injury. In Austria, it's 150 to 200 people that suffer from spinal cord injury annually. Spinal cord injury is a medically complex and life-disrupting condition. It's preventable, survivable, and needs not preclude good health and social inclusion. However, improvement of movement has not been achieved by standard medical procedures. Again, stem cells give hope to those victims. This is the story of a young boy who had an accident with a speedboat and he fell into the water ahead in front Two months after, he could not bend his hands upwards. He had a lesion starting from C3 to C5, and that's uh, the report from a German clinic. After surgery, we see that he can bend his hands upwards, and that enables him to move the electric chair alone, so he can drive around in his apartment. And he also can move a little bit his legs, which is just a fantastic result. Certainly, we have to ask ourselves, how does spinal cord injury happen? How did it start? Well, unfortunately, one of the most frequent causes of spinal cord injury is car accident. This can happen to those who walk on the street and are struck by cars, or by those who sit in the car may be drunk and they drive against a tree or against a building and end up 
with paresis or paraplegia of their legs and or their arms. Another frequent cause is falling from a tree and crushing with your spinal column against the bottom. Another frequent cause is jumping into a pool and crushing with the head against the bottom of the pool. Well, I'd like to show a little lesson to all those who love swimming, jumping into a pool. Never do a jump into the pool with the head first. Always use your hands in front of you. And there's a simple trick. Always put the thumbs together and the hands in front of you. This will prevent the most severe uh, occurrences. I had a girl who went into the pool in the morning, went to sleep in the sunshine, and when she went back to the pool, uh, the water had been drained from the pool in order to clean the pool. She jumped into the pool and with her head first and stuck against the bottom. Those are most terrible events. Well, I'd like to address especially young people. I know you want to enjoy life, you love partying, you love being together with friends to do all kinds of funny things. Please keep a little bit in your mind that spinal cord injury is a possible outcome of such partyings and try to stay in control of your body and what happens to your body. Then you'll never have spinal cord. That's what I wish to you. And to those who unfortunately have spinal cord injury, I'd like to invite them to inform themselves about the possibilities stem cells offer them. And when they have studied all the literature, when they have studied what stands in the internet, they can come and see us or other centers for treatment with stem cells. Thank you so much.